Hi traders, welcome to Elite Currency. My name is Chris. Today again, a video of the Forex market from the 20th to the 22nd of September, taking a look at the majors and some other currency pairs. All right, let's kick off this uh, video with the pound dollar one hour chart. I know there are a lot of uh, lines on this chart. Let me explain. Uh, the purple lines are basically the whiz levels that we use. The whiz levels indicate where we expect the most momentum, where we expect price to move the quickest. And typically we see that between zone three, four and four and five and even five and six. So we're talking about these zones right in here. All right, because this is the first level. This is level zero, two, three, four, five. And then six is not visible, it's up in here. So as you can see, indeed, uh, this case is quite maybe an exaggerated case, but indeed look at how price flies between three and four, even between four and five, and then breaks above five. So one of the reasons why I was expecting a pound dollar continuation is uh, because of the strong momentum. We can see it visually, but also just because price has really accelerated beyond these whiz levels, as I call them. All right, these purple levels are whiz levels. So uh, that was one of the, the hints that I thought, okay, there's a good chance, considering also the weekly candle, very strong candle on the pound dollar, that the pound could continue. So uh, we were talking about a retracement to about the 38.50 zone. In fact, it went a bit deeper, the 61.8 uh, fib. The invalidation level was this top because that's probably the wave one. This is wave two, this is wave three. So this is probably wave four. And uh, you can see it took quite a long time before this cor correction and consolidation uh, finished. You can see price making a correction, then going sideways. And just an hour ago, finally, we got the break by coincidence. Uh, it took some time sometimes. It's really a matter of patience. I took the trade, uh, as you can see as well, and have moved the stop loss just below these fractals. So uh, that, you know, if we use fractals, uh, in, in normally speaking, not on this, this template, because I want to reduce the noise for you in a way um or or, or not, not make it too complicated uh, of course but basically there are fractals here and here and i used the, the recent one to reduce the risk so there's just a few pips left uh on this trade otherwise it's basically a break even uh my target is up at 136.75 ish as you can see and it's looking good good for one hour candle a bit of a wicket top i think that's just a bit of volatility because of the the big move up i do expect it to continue but the worst case if it does fly down i uh, have a let's say roughly break even trade uh, but you can see how it, the dynamics played out how the patterns played out indeed momentum correction continuation that's what we're looking for those are ideal and if you're of course hesitant with the correction you can uh, take a, a break out of this trend line for instance i took it somewhere in i believe here all right where we had the second bounce and i saw uh, basically that confirmation that price was not going to break below the 61.8 i put the original stop loss below this low so looking good so far your dollar um oh and by the way uh, there are potential new trades on the pound dollar uh in my view maybe on a five minute chart or 50 minute chart if there's some kind of correction a bull flag like this or triangle i think a new potential trade could be possible as it breaks you know from an intraday perspective that is all right, your dollar uh, indeed didn't move too much. I was talking about it on Sunday that I think that your dollar will remain rangy and choppy. So far, it has done that. It didn't go really anywhere. It made a, a small little bull flag there, broke that bull flag, and is slowly edging higher. But I think that uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot of steam at the moment. That could change, of course. It doesn't have to stay that way. But for the moment, I think that this is more of a resistance zone around 120, uh, 25, 120, 50. And, you know, if there are any bearish candlestick patterns on a four hour chart, it could be worth a reversal back to about 119 and back into the support zone, which could be again worth a reversal. And then I would expect a breakout. If there are bullish candlesticks breaking through 120.50, you know, then obviously something else is going on. I would uh, really consider to look on lower time frames for bull flags and or, or triangles and look for breakouts for continuation. All right, so uh, I'm open to both sides. I'm just waiting to see how price responds in this resistance zone of 120, 120, 50. Yes, that could also be a head of shoulders uh, pattern. It doesn't have to necessarily be a head of shoulders pattern that flies down all the way here, uh, but it could just be simply a move back down to support at, at first. Uh, so that could play out as well. So an important zone, therefore I don't want to trade it right in front of it myself. I'll just sit on the sidelines 
for the moment. Um, you know, anyone who took the break here or the break here, you got some few pips. That's great. But now I don't think it's a good spot, uh, as I already indicated. Also, if it breaks this support trend line, that could also indicate a, a bigger move down to uh, to 119 support. All right, uh, moving on to the euro pound. I'm also in this trade. I talked about uh, that, I believe, too, that basically the weekly uh, candle is showing a very strong bearish candle here. And I think that this upside is probably a retracement, at least to break last week's low, I would say. I'm not saying this will fly down too far. It, it's still an uptrend. It still has a lot of support uh, levels uh, below it. And, uh, you know, this, the, the move down could be a simple retracement uh, that doesn't have to go too deeply necessarily, right? But for the moment, I think the bearish pressure is there. And uh, it, it could edge down to maybe 8750, for instance, uh, maybe even a bit lower. Uh, there's strong momentum here, so I think that's pretty likely. So we had retracement and a break of this retracement like this. Uh, and I took it just a little bit below that before that upon the break of these uh, these candle lows right there now let's see how it goes i think uh looking pretty decent though no, i actually took it earlier sorry i took it on these engulfing twins sorry all right because we had uh, a move down a lower high in my opinion right there so that and with engulfing twins at the lower high so that looked like a good setup to me uh as you know anticipating a break and indeed it went sideways and breaks so looking good, I think I'll move the trail stop loss a bit lower actually after this video. I'm not sure where, just a few pips above this high. So let me take a look at that right now quickly. 88.80, so maybe 89, 88.93, so something like that. Reduce the risk at appropriate times. I think this is a good time because we're having a breakout as we speak. Uh, dollar yen, I think uh, could be in for a little bit of retracement finally. It, you know, it's kind of slowly crawled higher uh i indicated that it could do that on sunday but it could just like you know make a choppy kind of upside very slowly nothing nothing special and that's what it really did it just gapped up a little bit over the weekend and kind of made this yucky kind of correction uh, with the trend but now it seems to have um, i think made a turn i think that there is a good chance of a move down and a correction down to the 23 or the 38.2 fib that could be again a bouncing spot and i would expect one more downside probably roughly to the 61.8 fib which could be again uh the moment where price makes a bigger upside so this is my you know my kind of path of least resistance at this moment let's see if this happens uh i think the best trade is long at the 61.8 fib that might take a while um shorts could be possible here or here um so those are the options i think from the shorting perspective now, it is still a bit risky because there is a bottom right in front of it here. So I think it would be more conservative and probably better approach to wait for a good breakout candle, wait for a bit of retracement on that candle, then look for the reversal trade down to the 23 or the 38.2 pip. I think that's a, a better approach than right now because what could happen is the price moves a little bit down, bounces back up and just stays and goes sideways. It is certainly possible that it does that too. It doesn't have to reverse. The trend uh, on the hourly four hour is up, so we shouldn't underestimate that. Uh, and I, although I think five waves have finished and there's a good chance of an ABC, the best is really to wait for the, the C leg to finish rather than trading part of the A leg. All right, and this is probably part of it. Uh, but you never know, the wave five can extend a little bit. So that's always the tricky thing with trading reversals. Aussie is looking bullish. It broke uh, above this resistance trend line. Finally, we talked about that uh, as well, uh, I believe, on Sunday, but uh, I'm not 100% sure anymore, actually. Uh, but I think that um, basically, you know, I was looking at this trend line, uh, at least a week ago I was, and it didn't break here. It made one more lower low, uh, and now it is uh, finally pushing higher. So that is looking good. Let me get rid of this fib quickly. And I think that maybe on a 15 minute chart, looking for some bull flag uh, and continuation could be a, a good setup. Just for instance, similar to something like here, for instance, or, or here, those are kind of bull flags that we can look for, or even here, for instance, that's an early one, but still something like that, uh, you know, something of a correction and continuation. I think that looks good for the odd USD because uh, ultimately, if you look at the bigger picture, right, uptrend, 
and this could be a good breakout candle in fact so i think that it's good for continuation um basically the kiwi is showing the same in fact also looking for breakout could be good for higher lower time frames uh, as well from this perspective maybe the hourly chart or, or fifth 30 minute chart looking for kind of a correction and continuation pattern uh, as well this might not happen on the outlet chart it could take a while because price just broke out so what could happen is that on a 50 minute chart we get flags breaks flags break and then we get an hourly pattern and then another break so for the moment i'm at least bullish on these pairs right um let's see if that happens but looks good so far dollar cat 2 looking uh, a bit not as weak as it did over the weekend then it looked like a bear flag, but the Euro CAD and Pound CAD are actually moving up. CAD is weakening, so I think this Dollar CAD is maybe not as interesting anymore uh, as it was over the weekend, especially with this upside. Ultimately, I think the whole structure is still bearish, looking at the trend, looking at momentum, looking at this correction. The break here was not that significant, and price still basically bounced off resistance to 50 fib and these previous bottoms, right? I should use red for that. So I think that a break below this uh, support level might indicate, with a good candle, might indicate the continuation here. Uh, there could be some small pause at the trend line, but could indicate the breakout. I'm a bit cautious with this one at this moment, but still leaning towards bearishness. I'm cautious because of the CAD side uh, that is looking uh, a bit weaker because uh, at this moment. So... All right, gold uh, was looking for a bounce, 1300, 1290, um, bounce or break, basically. Uh, 1300, pretty important for that. I think at this moment it is bouncing. Uh, I'm not really a fan of this gold situation at this moment. There's strong resistance up in here. Price moved down pretty fast from that, but is also at support. I'm waiting still on the sidelines with regard to gold. Uh, Euro yen has pushed and broke pretty decent far uh, distance now it seems to be making a correction i think that this could be just a mild abc correction and it might make another leg up again um it is trending at this moment so why not of course the euro dollar upside seems limited but you never know uh, the dollar yen upside seems limited so from that point of view the euro yen might make a bigger correction maybe back to those towards the long to moving average and it could turn into a, a zigzag pattern perhaps Right, rather than maybe a uh, a flat correction, uh, so 132.50 could be a bouncing spot. Uh, 133.50, 132.50 as well could be areas where price might make a continuation one more time. So far, you know the oscillators and price action is bullish. So I think there's a decent chance that this retracement is just a dip within the trend. Pollyan is looking um, more or less or even stronger, in fact. Than the Urian. It is going sideways and uh, it's a range like this. I can get rid of these lines for the moment. So uh, basically it hasn't broken yet. Would be nice if it made a little bit of a correction here before moving up, but it, had, it hasn't done that yet. And I don't know if it will. Um, if it does, I think it's still good to go long. Um, if it doesn't and it breaks instead, I think that could be interesting too. So there are a couple of areas to look for. It, of course, these highs but even a level like here for instance right and you can see that that also has a lot of resistance spots so what is that well 151 a break of above 50 151 could be an early indication of upside a break of 15150 would be the second one right so so far it hasn't broken but to me it, it looks very much like a pull sideways zone and i would expect one more pull how big that pull will be remains to be seen but it could be with the pound yen you never know it could really move a lot so it, this is an interesting formation uh and looking for a break of 151 first of all so let's see pound yen definitely on my list you're in new zealand uh in this kind of bull flag or is it perhaps a bear uh trend channel right that remains to be seen for the moment it could also even be a falling wedge a little bit because of this support trend line that has a weaker angle than the resistance trend line uh so far it is moving lower and lower uh, with lower highs and lower hosts but choppily and correctively so on a daily chart once again this is still looking like a bull flag um and i think that 
you know, a break of that flag to the upside could be a good trade for upside. Uh, with regard to downside, I'm not interested as yet. This is looking a little bit too choppy. Maybe if price were here, right, at resistance, that could be different. Now it is pretty close to support. So if anything, it might make more sense to look at a bounce at around 162.50 back up, back to the top of this channel, rather than looking for downside. Your odd uh, remains choppy in my view. Don't like it too much. Pound odd um, is trying to get up, but you can see. Sorry, I, I just had my uh, SWAT template here. I hope you don't mind. But basically, you know, the upside on the pound odd could have maybe looked interesting for many traders, but our SWAT template did not approve the upside. It didn't give the go yet. No green, no blue candle, no blue arrow. And the break is two mile, the push is two mile to the upside. So no entry there as yet. But if price breaks probably above this resistance level, I would expect an entry for the SWAT signal. And uh, I think that that would be probably a moment where the trade is good to go if it doesn't hit the long to moving average, because that would reset the, the upside. At this moment, all right, we have basically price. Let me take a look at which level, which whiz level. You see it's above the fifth, so the sixth level well, it actually hit the sixth level. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see if there's any, you know, upside left on this pound out. Maybe not. Pound New Zealand also, I don't see anything interesting at this moment on that particular pair. Um, Odd New Zealand is in a bit of a downtrend at this moment. So, but a bit choppy as well. Does not seem that interesting. Uh, Kiwi. You know, yen was a great one for the SWAT traders. Uh, basically, you see, you know, a small kind of introduction to SWAT. Basically, you see the, the whiz levels, and you see how nicely the SWAT indicates with the blue arrows and the blue candles when, you know, the trend is aligned and when price moves away from the moving averages and, and into the direction of the trend, and it gives you pretty clear signals when to trade. That's here, and that is here, and here, and, and most recently here. So uh, about five, this is the fifth signal in the meantime. The first four have worked well. I'm not sure if this one will work well, but still looking good to me. Target 83 for the moment. And uh, you can see that uh, New Zealand Yen, I think, uh, could be on its way from the fourth to the fifth whiz level. So doesn't look too shabby, I think. Uh, the upside, we have pretty much everything aligned here. Uh, the previous signals have worked out well. Let's see if this, this last one also does well. That wraps it up. Thanks for joining. For more free material, uh, indicators, and ebooks, and stuff like that at elitecurrency.com. Also, you can sign up so you get all of these uh, analyses sent to your email so you don't have to think about checking our website or our blog. Uh, if you, of course, want to try out SWAT, we encourage you to, to take a look at our SWAT system. Makes gives you confidence in your trading, uh, basically, by riding the waves without really having to know how to uh, count the waves at all. So, uh, you know, we, we use kind of uh, interesting tools like the Wiz tool and uh, moving averages and, uh, and these candles. So I hope that you will try it out. Uh, thanks for joining in any case and wish you all great trading. Cheers.